Share a story about what brought you politics. Was there a person? Was there an issue? Yeah, I, I would say, uh, I mean, certainly growing up here, what I was inspired by a lot of this history. I, I never studied polit politics and government in school other than what was obligatory. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't a passion of mine in school, and, and which I regret, you know, being in politics now. I wish I'd studied it more. <laughs> but I came to it as uh, I was in business. I uh, had a, a company called Happy Planet doing fresh food and juices and, in Strathcona, based in Strathcona. And um, I, a lot of my politics were expressed through my business. And I, I had felt uh, growing up quite politicized, which is easy to do in this city, I, um, I wanted to apply that to business and kind of take on the, the corporate realm, particularly around food and uh, healthy food, people having access to food. So we built this company, uh, a local company that was very focused on that and uh, making sure we were not only producing a maximum amount of, of BC grown ingredients, uh, which was kind of goes back to being inspired uh, in the early days of the company uh, when, when Mike was the premier and the, the programs to support BC agriculture by BC uh, and really highlighting the, the incredible uh, food that we grow in this province and the people who do that. So we, that, that was really at the, at, at the core of, of Happy Planet as a company, was sourcing all this local food. And uh, I was a farmer at the time in the Fraser Valley, so I, was, uh, I, I learned the food system from the ground up and, and then ended up in the, the business side of it, thinking, well, we, we've got to keep scaling up our impact and, and, and getting, creating opportunities for more BC farmers. Um, what that led to, uh, at, at about the turn of the millennium, I guess, uh, was um, was a very political company here that was supporting a lot of uh, BC farmers and producing lots of good food. We, we thought lots of good food. We ended up uh, very active in the community. Very All of our, we didn't have an advertising and marketing budget. We, we basically gave free juice everywhere we could. At every event, every festival, every nonprofit that wanted juice to do fundraising with, we would. That was our way of, of getting our brand out in the community. And uh, we found uh, through the change in government when um, Gordon Campbell won the election in 2001, there was immediately these very dramatic changes uh, that happened at a provincial level. I, that was preceded by, uh, I'd say. A very turbulent, difficult time here in the city with uh, with missing and murdered women. Uh, very difficult time. Uh, the downtown east side, I think, first really starting to descend into very, very uh, tough conditions, which have persisted to this day. Um, we ended up we were hardwired into a lot of these organizations as a juice company, uh, trying to support them with with uh, with what we what we made, and obviously connected to a lot of those politics. I ended up being um, invited to sit on provincial uh, advisory boards to the, the minister uh, early in the Campbell government. And uh, as a, someone growing this, this company, uh, I also ended up uh, involved in the election of Larry Campbell, who kind of came out of nowhere as the chief coroner and focused on the downtown east side and the overdose deaths, which again, we're, we're looking through another horrific chapter of. Uh, we, I, I was, I, I all of a sudden was at these tables with people in politics and finding that a lot more inspiration in, in the politics of the day and a lot, a, a lot of frustration in that we, we at that point we had 50 or 60 people, we'd grown, a, we, we'd set out on a mission and we were <coughs> succeeding at that and proving that you could take care of the environment, you could support the community and, and you could grow a great business. And then we had people in government saying, well, we can't support all these poor people because of, we have to be businesslike as a government. We have to you know, really mind, mind these budgets, and that means some of these people are disposable people, which, which is really what Larry Campbell responded to and, and, uh, and rallied uh, Cope at the time uh, into a sweeping into power. And I got swept up in that too in supporting Larry and the team. As a business, it was uh, which was a, fair, a novelty in the in the day uh, to have businesses more politically involved, and it was a successful outcome. And then 
Uh, I see Rob Safrati here. A number of us were asked by Larry to then be kind of the business uh, advisory uh, crew to the mayor, uh, and when Larry was the mayor, and started to see the inside of City Hall that way, and how that new council grappled with big decisions, uh, and uh, and that was, and there were all these same the legacy of Mike's work, and as he says, generations before to the beginning of protecting the watersheds and protecting the ALR provincially in the 70s. I mean, we have <laughs> generation by generation taken very bold action here that cities around the world. Uh, find remarkable. We, we are still a, a great example to the world because there are there is there is consistency over several generations here to make this basically a very green city and, and sustainable in, in, all, in the broadest sense of that. So I found um, I found it increasingly frustrating to stay in the in the the mindset of a business, the focus of a business. I was very uh, attracted to all the political activity that was taking place. Uh, we, we ended up very directly involved in the Windward Squat at the time, which obviously relates to provincial policy and income assistance and some city uh, overlap there. Uh, I was very involved in uh, wild salmon versus farm salmon issues on the food side of things and what the changes the capital government came in cutting all, a lot of the food and agriculture funding and support and, and focusing on big corporate agribusiness. Uh, the, I, it, and I ended up in these various meetings, and one of them was with this guy, <laughs> who was very compelling about saying, you know, it's a great time to get into politics. <laughs> there's turmoil, there's opportunity, and, and there wasn't much of a, a, a progressive voice coming from the business side of things. And so Mike was very, uh, very uh, persuasive. I, I would give him, uh, I would say, blame or, or credit for, uh, for urging me to shift gears. I was lucky enough to have the opportunity with uh, with my business being doing well. I could I could make a career change that, that is not easy for people to do. That's one of the big barriers to politics. How do you shift gears and take a chance that you'll get elected and uh, and leave a stable income for generally a lower income uh, if you get elected? So I I managed to make that transition. But Mike's conversation uh, I, I I did have a I got stuck on a, a Gulf Island with. Um, Flying back from a conference, stuck on a dock in the fog with Joy McPhail uh, uh, for hours and hours. <laughs> and she was, that was when it was Joy and Jenny in the BC legislature against uh, 77 BC liberals mm. in that time and heard uh, a very uh, compelling uh, pitch to get involved in politics as well. They, they, she was obviously looking for reinforcements. <laughs> and uh, and that was that. Those those were two uh, meetings that I look back and think they were very, uh, you know, people I respected immensely in terms of what they actually did. Uh, they walked the walk. They were very uh, activist in politics, and uh, and that was when, when I thought about going from business to politics. I don't want to be in politics. I would only be in politics if it was active, hands-on. If I knew I could get things done, and uh, and that was. That, that those were the turning points. Actually, hearing from from people who had done an enormous amount of work uh, and and could talk about that uh, was was really what persuaded me to do that. And although a couple of years in, in uh, as an MLA in, in the opposition in BC government, I, I, it was hard to get things done. So that that was the the connection with running for mayor in Vancouver, feeling like this city needed. New leadership needed focus, and uh, we have such potential here. And I thought I could apply myself, making that switch, which is what's kept me in politics. Uh, so I'm thankful to those who uh, stand on the shoulders of giants, uh, and, um, and and I'm really appreciative of that. And I think the freedom of the city is a is an example of, of the work that this gentleman's done on behalf of the community. And I know it's there's a whole team of people, and it's seen Gord Price and others who who've also been really pivotal in that leadership. It's it, the one vote does make a difference uh, on the odd in the odd council meeting, but you have to have a team, you have to have a community and a city that believes in this, and we're very lucky at Vancouver is that city. Thank you.